First of all, today, the British government has given Moscow until midnight tonight to explain why a Russian-made nerve agent was used in the poison attack in Salisbury. The Prime Minister says it is highly likely Russia was responsible for the attack against the former Russian double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia. A short while ago, a meeting of the government's emergency committee COBRA began, chaired by the Home Secretary, to discuss the response. The Prime Minister made a statement in the Commons yesterday and was followed by the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. It was an indiscriminate and reckless act against the United Kingdom, putting the lives of innocent civilians at risk. And we will not tolerate such a brazen attempt to murder innocent civilians on our soil. The events in Salisbury on the 4th of March have appalled the country and need thorough investigation. The local community and public services involved need reassurance and the resources necessary. The action the government takes, once the facts are clear, needs to be both decisive and proportionate, and focused on reducing conflicts and tensions rather than increasing them. Well, since the Prime Minister's statement and response, the diplomatic row between London and Moscow has escalated. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landale can bring us up to speed. Um, James, what has the Russian response been so far, bearing in mind the clock is ticking? Well, so far the Russians have once again denied that any involvement in events in Salisbury, and specifically the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has made it very, very clear that uh, they want more information from the British before they can respond. They say that uh, the British government have not provided them with any of, of this material, that the alleged nerve agent that was used in, in this attack. Uh, they also say that the British government uh, is not following the usual protocols under the, uh, uh, the, the what's called the OPCW, which is the Office for the prevention of chemical weapons, which is a convention that we are and the Russians are signed up to. Uh, and the Russians say that there are certain procedures and timelines for the provision of information uh, that the British are not following. So uh, a fairly predictable response from the Russians so far. In terms of the response from our allies, um, there has been broad support for Theresa May, particularly from Rex Tillerson in the United States. Um, but what does that mean in practice? Well, at the moment, there have been some warm words of support, as you say. Uh, yes, from Rex Tillerson and other uh, world leaders. Uh, the President Macron spoke to uh, the Prime Minister yesterday. I have to say that there is, a, there's a, there is a, certainly a gap between the views of Rex Tillerson at the State Department and the White House. The White House, for now, is still insisting that, yes, while they, are, they support the British and they condemn what took place in Salisbury, they have been much more reluctant to blame the Russians, whereas Rex Tillerson has been willing to accept the British analysis on this. I think the interesting question is this. Is there anything practical that's concrete that uh, the British can get in an international forum that in any way puts meaningful pressure on the Kremlin? Because at the moment we're getting, you know, words of support. Uh, the question will be in the long run, is there any hardcore diplomacy across the piece, whether EU, NATO, UN, anywhere, that uh, the British can get enough of a coalition together, enough of an alliance to put pressure on the Kremlin. I think that's going to be a long-term question. Right. And that then begs the question of some debate about what we should do with regard to the World Cup being held in Russia. Tell us a little bit more about some of the suggestions around that. Well, uh, the, uh, Boris Johnson has been speaking about this this morning and he's ref been refusing to, to go into the detail of what the British government may or may not do tomorrow if they don't get a satisfactory response from the, the Russians. I, my own view at the moment is the government will be very, very reluctant to try and organise any kind of formal, official sporting boycott uh, of the World Cup. I think, yes, we'll get some officials not going, but I think they know that that would be a very hard ask to try and get other countries to join them in not sending footballers there. I think what we're likely to see in the next 24 hours is far more domestic-focused re reaction. In other words, potentially the expulsion of Russian diplomats, potentially new measures to crack down on wealthy Russians living in London or, or who at least have their wealth here in London, uh, and more pressure on the international stage as well. James Landell, thank you. Well, I'm joined now by Peter Ricketts, the first national security adviser during the coalition government and now a crossbench peer in the House of Lords. Welcome to the programme. Um, let's just return to what Theresa May said initially in her statement yesterday to the House. She said it was highly likely that Russia was responsible for the poisoning of Sergei and Yulia Skripal and that there were only two plausible explanations. Either it was a direct attack by the Russian government or they had somehow lost control of this nerve agent. Does that give the Russian 
Russians a get-out? Not really, I don't think, because um, this sort of material, this is, uh, as Prime Minister said, military-grade nerve agent. Uh, it's only going to be produced by states, and it should be kept, if it's produced at all, which is probably legal under the International Convention, in the highest conditions of security. So it's offering them a choice between being saying they're incompetent or deeply implicated in this attack. What did you make of the statement broadly in the tone? I thought it was very good. I thought it was serious, clear, firm, measured, um, and it did give the Russians an opportunity to, to you know, come back with any comments they want to make. I think the problem now is going to be if, assuming the Russians don't come back with anything... Which is um, probable. Most likely. Um, producing a package of measures which lives up to the expectations mm. that have been created by the gravity of the situation, the gravity of her statement. Yes, because, as you say, it's <coughs> extremely serious what has happened, obviously using um, chemical weapon on the streets of Britain um, and Russia being likely to be responsible. Um, what, what could match that rhetoric in your mind? Well, uh, the sort of um, things that James Landau was talking about, I think, probably will be on the list. Expulsions of the security crowd in the Russian embassy. I would hope not the ambassador, because you need ambassadors, actually, when things are difficult. We need our ambassador to be passing hard messages in Moscow. Going after the money, the, the idea of this Magnitsky Act of uh, powers to seize money of people who've committed human rights abuses, that would be powerful, but I don't think it's a game-changer. Um, I've suggested that there should be more activity with our NATO partners. I mean, a chemical weapons attack in the UK is something that NATO should be interested in, not declaring Article 5. Right, so not saying an attack on one is an attack on <coughs> us all. But, I mean, using the NATO Council, taking the issue to NATO, putting it on the agenda. There is a NATO summit mm. coming up in a couple of months' time. I mean, I think we ought to be um, having NATO think differently about Russia, perhaps changing the dispositions of forces in Eastern U Europe. As James says, that's a longer-term thing, but, I mean, that's quite a potent uh, area to be looking at. But would any of those things, because to some extent we've done that um, in the past, certainly on sanctions, for example, you could argue that the cupboard is relatively bare uh, in terms of what Britain alone can do. <coughs> will any of that have a major impact on Vladimir Putin's thinking? But the only thing that will have an impact is things which, which hurt the Russia's reputation, because I think that does matter to Putin and, and the Russian leadership. Um, or possibly, um, you know, serious financial measures that, that really begin to bite. Um, it's realistic. Realistically, we're not going to change Russian minds about a pattern of behaviour that goes back over decades. But we have to show them that they can't do this with impunity. That there will be costs, and that's why we need to do this in as international a setting as much solidarity internationally as possible. That then is related to the strength of our case. Of course. Right. I mean, that solidarity that James Lander was also talking about, what would that mean in practical terms? What would our allies, you've mentioned NATO and perhaps bolstering forces, um, what would our allies really be prepared to do to show that solidarity? I rather agree with James that we will set ourselves up for failure if we go after a boycott of the World Cup, because I don't think people will, will want to... Um, uh, withdraw their teams uh, unless things get very much worse. I think the financial side, um, because there's a lot of Russian money in London, obviously, uh, but also in other European capitals, um, and the US have already taken some pretty draconian measures, I think if there can be more practical follow-up on seizure of assets of, of people that we have serious doubts about, that could be something. But it is going to be difficult, yes. Um, the Russian regime are hard to influence, but we've got to do our best in as wide a company as possible. I mean, Oliver Dadden, let's talk about those financial powers because the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, criticised the government yesterday for resisting Labour amendments, he said, to the sanctions and anti-money laundering bill, which would have brought in these Magnitsky powers, clamping down on Russian assets. Was that a mistake to block those amendments? Well, the first thing to say about the Magnitsky Amendment is a lot of the, the proposals in there have already been implemented through the Proceeds of Crime Act. We brought forward an amendment that enabled us to seize um, proceeds when they related to gross human rights violations. In terms of this amendment from the Labour Party, it will be considered again at report stage. The Foreign Office has made it clear that we will, we will look at this. There are some issues about whether the amendment works or not, but I don't think there's a real <coughs> division over Magnitsky. We've achieved most of what's required by Magnitsky anyway through previous actions. Right, Annalise Dodd, so what's the problem? Well, well, I was on that bill committee and I saw the government actually stopping debate after 25 minutes because they thought they might lose a vote around having Magnitsky powers in sanctions. Just to explain a little bit, these are named after that uh, uh, person who was imprisoned in Russia and tortured 
in prison when he was acting for a US businessman. They're designed to target, sat in the context of sanctions, target those sanctions at abusers of human rights on a grand scale. Now, we tried to get that provision in through this bill. The government shut down debate on it. And that meant we couldn't look at a lot of other amendments from Labour around, for example, tightening up rules on trusts, which we know is often used to hide money that's been laundered. Right. So do you think now that that should, despite your reservations, be something that the government should support? Well, I mean, I think it's important to, to get the facts on this, we, with the Proceeds of Crime Act, we did actually allow, have the powers to go after these gross human rights violations. If there's further measures that need to be taken, the Foreign Office has made it clear that at report stage, which is when, when the House will vote on this, we will look at seeing whether there's, it's necessary to bring forward further measures. All right, let's have um, a look at the cyber um, options, a cyber counterattack. Is that something that, well, first of all, it could be something that would be done quite quickly. Would that be effective? Well. I don't know exactly what they have in mind. I'm sure the UK does have some powerful um, assets in that area. I myself am a bit sceptical that a, a kind of offensive cyber attack against the Russians is going to work and might not um, produce uh, an immediate and, and even harder punch back. I wonder whether it would be more effective to do more calling out of manipulative Russian efforts in our media, uh, in our politics, uh, in France, we saw during President Macron's election campaign, the Russians tried this sort of manipulative stuff in France, and he called them out um, very publicly, and that was followed by a lot of public you know, um, recognition of what was going on. It's hard to do that kind of manipulation in the full transparent glare of, of publicity. I mean, so that, I think, would be more effective in my mind. Right. Um, we'll talk about <coughs> Russia today um, in a moment, but this cyber counterattack, I mean, what, what would that involve? Well, the first thing to say is that there is a process for this, which the Prime Minister set out yesterday in Parliament. We've got these two potential scenarios, which is either it's directly, the Russians doing it directly or they've lost control. We will make a judgment on that tomorrow and then the Prime Minister will bring forward a range of measures if it's the case that Russia is involved. I don't think it's going to be helpful to start speculating in, in detail on those, but we, the, we've already discussed lots of things. So, for example, going after uh, Russians linked to the Kremlin travelling. There's, there's lots of potential measures. Would you block wealthy Russians coming to London who have strong links to Vladimir Putin? Well, let's, <clears throat> let's, let's allow the Prime Minister to come up with uh, the, the options uh, tomorrow. We're, we're looking at what all potential So that options. would be part of it, would it, as an option? Uh, uh, that's a decision for the Prime Minister, but, but nothing is off the table. We're looking at all the potential options. All right. I mean, there was an issue about party politics uh, yesterday, Annalise Dodds. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, very quickly raised the issue of donations to the Conservative Party by British citizens of Russian origin. Was that the right moment to make that party political statement just after the Prime Minister had made and obviously said these very serious words about our national security? Well, I think it was right that Jeremy, men Jeremy mentioned that. I think we need to have more transparency. I mean, just as was, as was mentioned, we need to really know what is going on in terms of influence being applied across the political system, in our media, and also, indeed, the kind of financial issues that we're just talking about now. So I think having more transparency is a positive thing, and I think it was right for Jeremy to mention it there. People might not like it, but I think it's important that we get much more open about these kinds of issues in Britain. Right, but was that an appropriate moment when we're talking about national security rather than saying we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Prime Minister in fighting our enemies? Well, I think, actually, to be fair, in Jeremy Corbyn's speech, he did express support for the investigation. I think he said something very important as well, which is that we shouldn't move to a situation quickly where we have an escalation, that we need to be very proportionate, very thoughtful about this. In fact, some of what was just said by my opposite number now where I would agree with him, I don't think we should be jumping to conclusions. Jeremy said exactly that yesterday, so I think he made exactly the right points in his comments. I mean, the one thing I would say on this is... Uh, in terms of being proportionate, of course we need to be proportionate, but this is a significant escalation yes. where this nerve yeah, yeah. agent is being Absolutely. used on, on the streets of but, a town in England yeah. and where a police officer yeah. has fallen as a victim to it. And I, I think that, that does necessitate a serious response yes. if it turns out to be the case that a the Russians absolutely. Are, are responsible. And, and, and I don't think there's any disagreement between mm. parties on that. I mean, I, I also think that we need to be very careful that if we have measures, if, you know, if there is an investigation or is found to have been um, uh, that, that kind of involvement and no explanation, if we have measures that target a whole population, 
those can be certainly often a great way for that population to then end up um, you know, hating our country, whereas if we have proportionate targeted measures like those through sanctions All that right. Labour was trying to push, like those against money laundering and financial sanctions, then we could be in a better place than something that's interpreted just as a, an attack on all of the Russian people, for example, that wouldn't be helpful. Peter Ricketts, thank you.